so we're in the greenhouse today here at, in the Department of Plant Science at Penn State University, and we're reviewing some common nutrient deficiency symptoms as well as toxicity symptoms. So today in front of me you can see two examples of plants. Uh, we have common bean plants here. We have one that is uh, growing very healthy. It has all the nutrients that it needs and the right availabilities to grow healthy. Um, and we can see that in the above ground vegetative biomass of this plant. And then on my right, we have a plant that isn't looking quite as healthy as this one is. And this is an, a, a pretty good example here of a plant that's experiencing some strong sulfur deficiency symptoms. Now, sulfur is a macronutrient, which is uh, not needed in the same concentrations as other important macronutrients like nitrogen or phosphorus, but nevertheless, it's still quite important for plant growth. It's essential for some amino acids as well as proteins, uh, and especially sulfolipids within the plant. So we can see the deficiency symptoms of sulfur manifest similar to nitrogen, but with one key distinction. With nitrogen, because it's mobile within the plant, we'll see uh, a yellowing or a pale greenness begin to manifest in the older leaf tissues as that nitrogen is moved to the newer growth. So when a plant's experiencing nitrogen deficiency, the yellowing will occur mostly in the older uh, leaf tissue, while the younger leaf tissue will be uh, healthier and greener looking. And in sulfur deficiency, we see the opposite. Sulfur is immobile within the plant. So as the plant is growing and needing more sulfur for its production of above ground biomass, those deficiency symptoms begin to manifest in the newer leaf tissue. And we see that here in this example, where these, this new growth is yellow uh, and pale green in color, um, showing that it's deficient in sulfur. Here are just a few more examples of that uniform leaf yellowing in the upper canopy that is indicative of sulfur deficiency. The pale green color of leaves in plants deficient in sulfur is consequent of sulfur playing an essential role in chlorophyll formation and protein synthesis. Additionally, sulfur is needed for nitrogen fixation by rhizobia bacteria in legumes. Although both sulfur and nitrogen are mobile in the phloem, compared to nitrogen, sulfur in older leaf tissues is not as readily distributed to new growth. Consequently, the uniform pale green leaves appearing in the newer growth are an indicator of sulfur deficiency, while the same symptoms occurring in the older growth of plants are an indicator of nitrogen deficiency. Overall, in most soils and water, sulfur is rarely limiting, and consequently, sulfur deficiency is not as common in agricultural settings as is nitrogen deficiency. Now, sulfur can be applied through uh, fertilizer, but here in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, it's actually quite available to plants and we rarely see sulfur deficiency because of all of the uh, coal-fired power plants we have uh, in the state of Pennsylvania which produce sulfur dioxide and release that into the atmosphere. And then that sulfur dioxide is absorbed into rainfall and distributed across our agricultural lands uh, and then made available through plants that way. So sulfur deficiency is actually quite rare here in Pennsylvania. Um, and in other places of the country it can be provided through the irrigation water depending on uh, how much sulfur is present within that. Uh, now, overall, plant availability of sulfur is also dependent on the temperature of the soil. Um, so, although sulfur may exist as elemental sulfur within the soil, that elemental sulfur is not available to plants. It needs to first be oxidized before it's plant available. And that process of oxidation is highly dependent upon uh, the soil temperature as well as moisture. Uh, so, in areas where the soils are very cold, you may see sulfur deficiencies begin to uh, show up in your plants uh, simply because that sulfur isn't being oxidized into its plant available form. Uh, 